Hi, everyone. My name is Aisha Gül. Uh, this is my first time in Strange Loop. Uh, it's very exciting. And um, so I uh, work at Autodesk, A360 Cloud Platform, um, as a senior software engineer. Uh, and I am a Google developer expert in Angular. And uh, I'm here today to talk to you about a little bit of data visualization, a little bit of the tools that we are using. Um, before I start ta talking about the tools, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the other organizations that I work with, because Alex Miller uh, strongly encouraged me to do that. And that doesn't happen very often. So thank you for doing that. Um, I've been. Uh, I hosted Women Who Code Meetups in San Francisco for JavaScript for two, two years. And I've been teaching for Girl Develop It and preparing curriculum. And it's open source, free out there, and anyone can take it and use it anywhere that you like. It's teachingmaterial.org. Uh, Teach with Black Girls Code. They have amazing hackathons. And uh, also The Last Mile, uh, which is a program in prison, in uh, San Quentin prison uh, in California. Um, we've been teaching there more than a year now. And I'm just one of the mentors. And I help with the curriculum as well. And it's a very, very interesting program. If you are uh, interested, there's a 10-minute documentary about it, too. Um, and it's been an amazing uh, experience to do that, because uh, it's a totally different Thing to be able to code in a place that there's no internet. And lastly, I've been uh, the CTO of AnyCannons for, uh, for more than a year, last year. Um, so at AnyCannons, we teach human trafficking survivors how to code. I was inspired by the last mile and our success there. And uh, it's been great. We had a lot of challenges, but um, we have great students. So that's about <clears throat> the organizations that I work with. But if you have any questions uh, later on, find me. I'd love to talk about it. So why do I want to talk to you about uh, storytelling with your data? Because that's the problem that I've been trying to solve at work recently, I mean, lately. So at um, Autodesk, if you're familiar, we do a lot of 3D uh, programs. And um, the, one of the products that I'm working on is the 3D Viewer. It's such an amazing tool. I was so you know, inspired when I first saw it. You can um, <laughs> move around 3D things. You can pull them apart. And um, you have a walking ability. You can just walk in it. Um, this is such an awesome tool. And it really encourages people to work together, being able to you know, work uh, from a distance especially like the architects and manufacturing designers. Um, but soon enough, we realized that just being uh, able to have access to the data is not the whole thing. <clears throat> we are able to just display any kind of model. And uh, most of the models are so much more complex than um, Golden Gate Bridge. And uh, when you see it, most of the time, people are very confused. They don't know what to do. You build all these amazing tools, but then it's uh, really uh, hard to use. So uh, we have the viewer uh, basically not open source, but it's an open API. So anyone can take it and uh, put it on their own website. And people did. And they did really cool stuff with it. <clears throat> so this is one of them. They just. Um, took it. It's a building. And um, they just gave so much more information um, than we did. But it has to load. So what this <coughs> is doing is that the, the green things that you see there is, are the sensors. So they're able to measure uh, all the inefficiencies of the heat and or maybe gas, I don't know. Uh, what they're measuring exactly. And they can monitor it at all time. <clears throat> and another really um, cool one that I found totally not our product, um, someone in the open source did it, is um, actually made an animation with it. 
So we've been there, right? We we read the documentation for IKEA. Everyone did that, and then it's really confusing. You don't know, and the pictures never look like what it is. But this is a great use of the three D uh, environment, I think. And it's really telling us where to look for. I mean, if you just send me this model, I would never know uh, where to find those little stuff. Yeah, I think I can assemble that. <coughs> so <coughs> these are the things that we've been uh, working on and struggling with a lot. And, and I think this is a problem with everybody. Uh, we have a lot of data. We don't know what to do. There's just like overexposure to some data. Uh, but it's really hard to understand, and just giving access to someone to the data is not the whole picture. So <clears throat> these are the uh, examples on, uh, on the slides, and if you want to take a look. And also, the forge.orders.com is the uh, platform you can go and uh, check out the APIs yourself. <clears throat> And for the tools at, at Autodesk, at least, uh, we use uh, TreeJS, obviously, AngularJS, uh, D3, um, and RxJS, and many more, actually. <laughs> Has anyone used Angular 2.0 yet? Yay! <laughs> You're teaching it, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't know, it came out. It's out of beta now. It came out Wednesday. And I'm uh, super excited to, to be the first one to talk about it, hopefully. Um, so you can check out the new version and the new website here. And it's a really amazing tool. <clears throat> it's been two years and thousands of commits only. This is just the Angular website, I mean, uh, Angular um, repo. There's so much more. <clears throat> and everything is organized into smaller modules now, and uh, it's so much easier to um, wrap your head around the different parts of your application, I think. And the speed and performance are improved vastly. Now you don't have to ship the compiler to your um, clients anymore. You can just um, do the compiling and do the things that Angular needs to do in the back end and then send uh, compiled version of it, which is the 60% of the Angular code. And there's a lot of really cool toolings that help us to uh, use it. Angular CLI is one of them. Uh, it's kind of magical. Uh, RxJS is, um, I, I think it was built by Microsoft first, but now uh, some people at Netflix are working on it. It's a, these are all open source, obviously. It's an amazing. Uh, tool. I was so sad when I first heard about it. I, why didn't I know about this? Anyone used it before? Yeah, very few. It's really, really cool. <laughs> but uh, it's also a little mind-blowing at first. So <clears throat> what it is is that uh, instead of uh, promises, it allows us to work with observables in a uh, very efficient way. And we have the code analyzers and uh, TypeScript and many more tools. And material design is in alpha, but um, it's looking really good so far. The other tool <laughs> that recently changed is D3. So it went through a, a huge change as well. Uh, if you, how many people use D3? Um, few, yeah. Uh, it's an amazing library, truly amazing. It uh, stands for data-driven documents. It allows you to work with your data and make um, uh, DOM manipulations very easily. But it's also a very flexible tool, which means that it's complicated to work with sometimes. So <coughs> it has a new version as well, version 4. Uh, after a whole year, uh, Mike Bostock said it's ready. Now it's also uh, organized into smaller modules, so people can just take parts of it and don't have to have all of the library if you are not using everything, so which makes it even better uh, to mix and match different libraries, uh, because you don't have to worry that you're using uh, this or that. It has a lot of cool functionalities and a very, very long change log. I strongly recommend it, reading it, though. And it has an amazing uh, open source uh, community. 
Um, <clears throat> on the website, you can see all of the examples and take it, and people will constantly post it. Uh, and there is a conference that, there's a conference coming up for D3, uh, D3 OnConf, and they don't allow <laughs> you to apply for the conference if you don't submit a code there. So <clears throat> they encourage sharing. So all of these things are changing very rapidly. So how do we migrate from one to another? And there's just too many things to migrate from. And um, we wish it was this easy. You just change the script, and then everything works. But obviously, it's not the case. Uh, but the good news is that um, there are lots of helpers. D3 is the changes are not that um, difficult to handle, let's say. Uh, you need to change the, some of the functionality, but the way you write your code is basically the same. Uh, that is not the case for Angular. Um, it is very different. But what they have been trying to do is trying to um, change the style of it a little bit to make it easier for people to make the switch. And they're also building the an, an upgrade tool. So <clears throat> those of you who haven't um, seen it for D3, so it allows us to uh, make some selections on the DOM um, and attach some data to it. Uh, it's just like jQuery, but with the data um, added to it, I would say. And you can, now you can do uh, a lot of things, like whatever you, you want, uh, with that data points at the DOM using that data. So in this case, we are selecting some uh, paragraphs and appending some uh, array. And um, we are using that array's um, um, elements to create our HTML. For those of you who work with it, um, I actually haven't met anyone who really works with D3 and hasn't had a moment of saying, like, what just happened. <clears throat> and it usually is about our um, selections, and um, there's a lot of emphasis on it. Because there's this really um, kind of confusing function called enter and append and then exit and remove. And um, <clears throat> every time you enter and append, you are changing your selection, and you are working on a totally different selection. It was. Um, that was the case. But now you are actually getting a copy of it, I think. So <clears throat> as I mentioned, the way we work hasn't changed that much. So we still have to, anytime we have new data points, we have to make a selection, append the data to it, and then append all of our DOM elements with that, those data points to our stage. And um, when we need to remove it, we have to do exit and remove. But there's an addition to it, so <clears throat> which is a merge function, which we did not have before, which allows us to merge the ones that has to leave and the ones that are coming in, which is really useful. I mean, if you're doing um, real-time data or any kind of data that is important that you show the difference, um, it's a really cool thing to do. So I don't know if you could see it, but <clears throat> so I have the basic, um, you know, the HTML added with my data, but I have two different data uh, points, data one and data two arrays. So I'm rendering the first one and then rendering the second one. I don't know if you could see it, but um, now the ones that are leaving uh, has a different color than the ones that has to stay, which has the new, new data points attached to it. And uh, we are merging them together to be able to see it at the same time. Um, <coughs> D3 comes with really uh, cool transitions. And um, it's even easier now to work with them. Uh, basically, it's defined for us. And um, we have an ease function, and then there's uh, a lot of ways of doing um, different easing, which is really nice. If um, you, are, you want to use 
few things from D3, but you don't want to get to get into all of the SVGs and deep dive into data visualization. One thing that you can definitely use is scales that you can not really find in any other, lang any other library. What scales does is that it takes your data point and then scales it to the um, environment that you are trying to display, basically to your um, screen. So usually your screen is not this big, but um, <clears throat> it is taking everything as a range, all of your data. Um, well, this is not the data, I'm sorry. The, the range is the, the, uh, your display size. And then you also have to give it the domain, which is the range of your data points. And then it gives you back a function that calculates any time you give a data that cal uh, calculates the matching point on your uh, screen. OK. This is not super useful for uh, printing, but it's very useful for axes and um, other stuff. And Axis um, was a little bit more complicated before. Now it's so much easy, easier with uh, D3 version 4. So <coughs> we can just divide our um, process into building our SVG, populating our data, and then drawing our axes uh, over and over. So we do this inside the render function most of the time because most of the time, you will need to change your data points and then redo the rendering. Also, you can take advantage of the animation uh, request frame. So <clears throat> here's an example. You can change the data, and the um, scales are changing, and axes are being re-rendered each time we click. So why are we using Angular and D3 together? Has anyone used Angular and D3 together? <laughs> we should be friends. Um, I really like it. I think there are a few talks here, uh, too, about React and D3. Um, it is a really great idea to put uh, D3 functions into a component, because D3 is not really easy to do. Uh, you have to basically define everything from your skills where everything has to look. So it's not like a pre-made library, I mean, uh, plug and play thing. So you have to create the same things over and over. So it's a really great idea to be able to put them inside different components with Angular or React or anything else uh, so that you can reuse them. You can just pass them some data. It could be a bar chart. It could be a scatter plotter. And um, you don't have to write it over and over. So that's why I really like using Angular, too. Um, well, Angular 1 was actually doing exactly the same thing with the directives, but it was a little bit more confusing, I realize. We also have ng modules, which allows our, uh, us to uh, put together our components and services and all of the functionality that goes with it uh, into single modules. This is. <laughs> I was really excited about it. There was uh, some, you know, people were not very happy when they said we will have modules for some reason. There was a huge discussion about it, but I think it really makes it easy to, um, you know, move code, share code, and basically make your own libraries. And TypeScript has been very useful because <laughs> D3 um, is very picky, maybe. I mean, when you're drawing a line with a lot of data points, uh, all of your data points has to be number or you know, whatever you need it to be. But if any data point is missing, if um, you have one issue with just one data point, your whole graph won't render. And TypeScript is really cool because you have a chance to check if, the, um, if what you're giving to your graph is the right thing. So to get started with Angular 2, um, 
Angular CLI is a really great tool. I mean, there are lots of other options out there. Uh, there's a starter project, but this is really, really awesome. So <clears throat> you just have to npm install it globally, and then you can just say ng new my app, create a new app, and then um, you can run a server. It will npm install everything for you and uh, build it. And So this is the basic structure of the app um, out of the uh, Angular CLI. I have a few additions here, but. <laughs> so we have a distribution function, uh, folder that CLI created some uh, dev assets for us. <clears throat> you can build for production as well. Everything is ready for you. And um, we have. Uh, everything loaded for us. And Angular CLI has its own JSON file that you could um, make some adjustments and make it your own, basically. Once you do that uh, on your app, you have this one main module. This is um, where your application starts. So it's a very tree structured thing. You have only one component that is your root component. And um, once you um, initiate that, it knows what else to render. Uh, it knows its child components, and then the child components know its child components. So <clears throat> I think it's a really cool system. It also allows you to do a lot of uh, lazy loading very easily. So <clears throat> you can define a totally different route, totally different part of your app uh, separately, and then uh, include it. And it will make it easy to work on. So here is our app module. Uh, whenever I create a new uh, component or a service, automatically CLI is adding it to my app component. This might not be the behavior that you want sometimes, um, but it's very useful for now. So we have the uh, six uh, imports modules. Uh, these are the main um, Angular modules at the beginning. And then I have some material, and I have my own um, components. So if we look at the uh, module structure, we have uh, some declarations. These are the components that we are going to be using. Uh, we have some imports, uh, all of the uh, modules that this app will need. And we have some uh, providers, which are the services, which will be the uh, common functionality throughout our app. <coughs> So any kind of uh, service that you um, insert on the root level will be available to you any, in any part of your uh, application. And then uh, our main component is the app component, and um, I do have things going on in here. So one thing that I wanted to show you was the uh, animations. Uh, animation is a, a very new tool in Angular, and um, they have been making it very, uh, working on making it very flexible. Um, it looks like a lot of code. This is my animation on the right side that's being defined. So um, I have a trigger, so I predefined it, so I can take this trigger into any kind of component and reuse it. That's why I put it inside a separate uh, folder. And you define the basic transitions. Let's say I actually wanted to make, always want to make a slides uh, animation like the reveal JS. So I think I'm going to do that with this. We have a state that we are defining. So when any time the in state happens for that component, these styles will uh, happen. We have some transitions, and then uh, we have some keyframe animation capabilities as well. <laughs> so if, uh, I mean, you, all you are going to do is a bar chart. Uh, I think D3 is a overkill, except the scales, if it's a um, horizontal bar chart. That makes it a little easy. But uh, if, if you have this capability in your application already, some animations, and then uh, you can basically use divs to create the same 
uh, or SVG as well. So let's take a look what this does. So inside my app component, um, I have some data service that is getting the, uh, fetching the data for me. Um, and it's using the RxJS observables for HTTP. So <coughs> we define the observables um, and where we are going to make the call inside uh, my service. But before I subscribe it, it's not uh, being called anywhere. So that's something to keep in mind. And um, the cool thing about observables is uh, also that, that if I don't, I'm not in this component anymore, it's not in my view. And if there is some calls that I'm still waiting for to happen, it's, they will all die down, be unsubscribed. So I'm getting this data, and then uh, I am um, giving that data to my child component. So basically, app component is uh, one of my main components. So I'm trying to keep all of my data inside um, kind of like the smart components, like the top level components. So the, uh, child components don't have to know anything about the uh, structure of my app, and uh, they can take any kind of data from any kind of app, any kind of backend, and they can be reused. So this, is, this was a huge problem that we faced in our previous product. Um, there was a lot of people working on it, and then uh, we were trying to reuse some parts of it, and it was a true mess, because we were constantly changing the uh, data to match the structure of the components. And that's definitely not the way to do it. Instead, I'm uh, keeping the data in only one place, which is kind of the parent, and then I'm passing the data in as an attribute. So um, these square brackets are the attribute uh, binding. Um, I have the app animations component that I newly created. And it all it needs is the data that I'm giving it to it, and then it will know how to render it. If you look at the animation component, there's not much going on, but also there's no uh, data-related stuff, too. It's really... Uh, doesn't know which application it's in, basically. So <clears throat> the animation one is uh, defining these animations, uh, the touch animations, activation. And anytime I add a new one, it adds a new one. Um, not the previous animation, but it works. Uh, the way I define it is that I uh, put all of my uh, animation definitions inside another animations function. Uh, so I can share it between uh, a lot of components. And <clears throat> if you look at our uh, component definition, I'm importing that, those animations. And um, the line that starts on 9 at component is the uh, component annotation, which defines the function, uh, the class that comes right after it, as a component. And the selector is the app animation, so anytime <clears throat> I want to use this, I use that uh, HTML tag. We can have template URLs, style URLs, or just put them in there as well. And uh, the other thing that we can put is the animations that we will be using. So I'm going to use fly in and out and uh, datum state animations. Um, this looks a little bit um, confusing, but also because I tried to put multiple animations in it. Um, that's also why. So I'm defining a fly in, start, and fly out, done event. So every time we see a, a parentheses, that means an event being emitted. Uh, so we have a way of knowing animation is done and before it starts. So I'm just constantly logging that, do not doing anything about it. Uh, but the fly in and out animation is being defined as an attribute. So anytime we have the um, square brackets, that's an attribute. Um, and when we click, we're just toggling. <coughs> OK. 
Jesus. So here is a simple uh, bar graph component that I prepared. Um, basically, I have the functions that I promised to you, the setup, uh, build the SVG, and uh, populate with the data. So I uh, keep running these functions over and over whenever a change happens. Uh, Angular also gives us these uh, change detections. Uh, anytime anything changes on your components, uh, which we are expecting the data to change, um, the changes will be reflected, and we will re-render it. <clears throat> Here um, we are defining basic uh, scaling of the x and scaling of the y, and uh, we have the axes we are defining. But if you notice, uh, this setup function is not uh, knowing anything about the data as well. So it doesn't have the data yet. Um, <clears throat> the scales that we are defining is just telling how to render inside the DOM, but it doesn't know the data so far. When we uh, built our SVG, uh, we defined just the SVG, which is uh, going to hold all of our um, visualization, and then we can append all of the axes and everything. And the populate function is the one that is um, letting know how to actually render uh, with the data. So with, we are appending the data, selecting all of the bar elements, and then appending the data to it. And enter and append is um, adding all of our data rectangles, and we are transitioning into it. And the, uh, that's why we have to also define the domains, which is the input values of our scales inside our uh, populate function. Um, I'm also using some color scale. So this is, uh, this is the data for the um, Syrian refugees um, by division by the country. So I really wanted to show this uh, data because um, we keep talking about it, we keep hearing about it, but we don't really realize what's going on and uh, where these people are going. And it was really surprising to see that most of them are in my home, home country, basically. Uh, and it's a small country. It's not that big. It's smaller than California. So I decided to uh, look at the data in um, maybe different way. Come on. <laughs> Okay, so I added these um, categorizations. I got this data from uh, Wikipedia, and uh, it has, by the country, the refugee count, GDP, uh, area, population. I mean, <clears throat> when we hear like people are going to another country, it doesn't really, you know, make sense to us. But um, this is the same uh, scaling compared with the uh, GDP of those countries. So <laughs> as you can see, uh, these countries over here who has the most refugees are not the richest ones in the world. And this is uh, the area that they have. It, they're not big countries either. And uh, relative population and um, GDP per capita. So I thought it was interesting to see. <clears throat> and uh, one of the things that I wanted to demonstrate, although it's really hard to, 
see, you have to scroll to see it. Uh, one of the questions that I get all the time is that how to display complex data. This is not very complex data. But people always try to do a very you know, beautiful, complex uh, visualization and put everything in one uh, place. And I really don't think it's a good idea. Um, and perception is very important. And it's really important to see the differences and um, to have a different way of looking at the same thing. So I uh, skip some of my slides. Um, so this is going through the uh, generators that we have with the Angular CLI and how we can get started. And a uh, really cool thing is it kind of opinionated. So when you do ng build or try to deploy, it tells you all the things that you've done wrong and uh, all the things that you don't need. It just strips it out. It's really cool. <coughs> and um, Am I doing with time? Oh, OK. All right, I'm going to just skip through it. But there's a lot of resources on my slides if you like to um, you know, save it somewhere. So these are uh, great Angular res uh, Well, let's start with the D3 ones. They're really fun. This is one of the uh, fun ones that I recently saw. Um, this is my absolute favorite visualization so far. <laughs> Um, the person who did it is uh, working on the second one for a long time now. So it's really, really cool. <laughs> so D3 is uh, super flexible. There is no other library that you could do things like that, I think. Um, there are a lot of libraries. They're much easier to use, though. I mean, if you don't need something very uh, complex, you should not spend your time doing it. And. Um, For Angular resources, um, there is uh, Chrome Debugger tools. It just released last week, but we already have a lot of tools. We have the CLI, we have the Chrome Debugger, and um, we have a lot of great courses. And I think there was one of them in this conference also. And uh, Angular 2 has some open source uh, charts as well. They're really, really cool. Uh, if you are doing something simple, again, uh, definitely use somebody else's, and it's a great learning opportunity, I think. That's it for my talk. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions or want to just talk, please come say hi. And I have some t-shirts. I had 3D uh, and Autodesk if anyone wants. Thank you. <laughs>